Hey everybody, it's Daniel Ramsey, and if you're just joining us now, we've got the special pleasure of talking to somebody who's really been involved deep in building huge real estate teams, as well as working with virtual assistants. Caitlin, I'm so thrilled to have you here today, so thank you for joining. Thank you, I'm excited to be here. Yeah, well, we're, we're gonna talk, because you're the Director of Client Care, and Correct. this is a big role, and it's a huge role, but before we get going, I wanna hear about your story, you know, what's your current, well, the company that you work for, we definitely have to introduce that company because it's a great company, but I want to hear your story, how you get, got started in the industry you know, and what your role is today, basically. Absolutely. Well, actually, I just celebrated four years with her group this past Saturday, so nice. um, it's been really special. It's been quite the journey. Um, so yeah, I started with her group. Um, and we are affiliated with Keller Williams in 2016. Um, I came on, I'd been interviewing with the company for quite a few months and was really excited to uh, get my foot in the door. I was brand new to real estate. I had no real estate background. Um, however, um, I, I joined the team as, well, I was hired as a transaction coordinator, actually. And that lasted about three days. <laughs> and then ah, we realized that my, yeah, that wasn't the, the system. We were still figuring it out then. Um, yeah. We'd had a couple teams, but the foundation wasn't as strong there. And being brand new to real estate, it's really hard to develop a transaction coordination coordination system with very little knowledge. Um, yeah. So I shuffled over to listing management. Um, and okay. that's where I actually met Carissa, who's going to come on here in a little bit. Um, uh, one of our virtual professionals and she really helped actually teach me um, how to become a listing manager. Um, so it was really awesome. But I did that job. I was in that role for probably, gosh, in a year and a half. And yeah. then I was able to move into transaction coordination and you know, having that background and that understanding of real estate, I was able to roll out our listing management um, division, if you will. And then I moved over to our transaction coordination division, helped build that out for our team. And here I am today as a director of client care, where we actually have um, operations coordinators in all of our locations. We're located in 20 different, we have 20 different locations across the United States right now. Um, and so we have admin professionals in each of those locations that I hire, mentor, support, um, work with them to optimize our systems. Um, yeah. And I also have the, the luxury of working with our virtual professionals as well and helping them grow. So, okay, for everybody who's listening, I want to kind of paint the picture of your guys' success because I'm really excited about the number of transactions, the total gross volume that you guys did last year, and the fact that we've been um, kind of working together I want to say for like eight, eight years, seven, eight, nine years, yeah. somewhere like a million, it feels like forever, which I yeah. love. So how many transactions did you guys do last year? Oh gosh, it was over a thousand. I don't actually have those numbers. I would have to go back, but it was a lot. And this year we have huge goals. Um, we want to be well over 2000 transactions um, with our teams and we're well on the way of getting there. Our January was amazing. Um, you know, a lot of our locations, it's cold. We're getting, we're supposed to get 18 inches of snow here in Vermont <laughs> today uh -huh. nice. into tomorrow. Um, but that hasn't stopped the, the real estate industry and we're really excited about it so well what's interesting is you guys are going to do a double that's the goal is that correct yes yes i know a lot of companies that a double is just like not in their yes. you know preview that's not even a possibility um why do you believe that you guys are gonna you guys are gonna hit that double Oh gosh, because of the people that we have and the systems and the support, um, we're a very growth minded organization in general. There's always a way. So we know we can, we, we can do it. It's just also making sure that we have the systems for our agents in the background to help them scale their business and, and grow their own locations into, into different locations as well. That's awesome. I love it. And you said we're going to we're going to bring in one of our virtual professionals to have mm -hmm. a conversation. I think that's great. I think that's going to be such a fun conversation. So if you've never met or worked with somebody, this is going to be a great idea to see the mindset and the kind of growth and the ability of having a virtual professional in your real estate organization. Um, so let's talk through your role. What are you um, exactly responsible for within the business and how you know, and we started with your, your story, but let's get into the nitty gritty. Like, 
what are you doing on a day-to-day -day basis that really helps drive revenue for the, for the business? Yeah. So now my focus is on our people, our operations coordinators and our virtual assistants. Ideally, I hope that I'm making their lives easier on a daily basis by really auditing our systems, trying to find optimizations, eliminating any duplicate of tasks. Because, you know, as you are in this business year over year, things change. Some marketing comes in, some marketing is not necessarily, you know, you need to be out there. So we're always looking at our checklists and our systems to see like, what, what do we keep? What do we bring to the next level? And what can we just simply get rid of? Because we don't need to be doing something just to do something. We always want to make sure that we're intentional. Um, so that's a big part of it. I do a lot of coaching with our operations coordinators, um, making sure that they feel good. And we're always talking about best practices and ways to support our agents. Um, I, I work with our, our VPs, on a separate note too, making sure that they feel comfortable, that they have all the resources that they need um, to grow. Um, so it's been pretty awesome. And having the background of being in the listing management um, division and also in the transaction coordination division has really allowed me to see their worlds and understand that it's not always easy and that it can be a lot of tracking down things and following up and hectic. Um, I'm also a licensed agent. Um, I got licensed about a year and a half ago to be able to put my agent hat on and to just be able to support our agents and see what their world is like. So I only work with, you know, close family friends and like to refer that off to people in our company because it's not necessarily my background. I'm very administrative, um, yeah. but I think that having that knowledge um, is really key to helping us continue to grow our admin division. You know, one thing um, we, we do about um, around 400 consultations every single month, our company, and we're helping, you know, teams and agents across the country figure out the systems and processes to scale and grow. Mm -hmm. One thing, and I, I think you'll love this, Caitlin, because one thing that I always hear from our clients is it's so hard to find a you. It's like really hard to find a you. So let's, let's go through like, what are, what's some of your secret sauces? Like if somebody would like is saying, you know what, I need a director of client care. I want somebody who can own the operational, you know, challenges inside of my business. What, what's your secret sauce? Like who, who are you? Yeah. Um, that's a great question. I, you know, it definitely, I'm not the same person I was when I walked in the door four years ago. Yeah. So I came from a background in hospitality, restaurant management, um, event coordination. Um, so through my skills of organization, that's really helped me keep things organized and be able to be able to follow a checklist and follow direction. Um, and also have that customer service background of, you know, we do have tough clients and we do have, um, mm -hmm. you know, some, some agents we work with, you know, our personalities are all different. And so it's really being able to still find a way um, to make that relationship positive. Um, yeah. so that's one thing. Um, and really learning, you know, fast forward four years, gosh, I mean, for me, it's the people we surround ourselves to. I think our culture is a big thing at her group. Um, being able to trust the people you work with and, you know, respecting everybody um, is a huge part of it, I think, yeah. in terms of that secret sauce. I, I think a lot of it's respect um, and kindness. Um, yeah. What else is there? I think that also the, I mean, <laughs> the ability to work with people, you got to be flexible. You've got to be open-minded. I think that's also really helped me. Um, I may not agree with everything that we do or, you know, that we're looking at moving forward to, but at the same time, knowing that there's always a way and that I have the ability to be part of something bigger than myself is yep. really, really, um, powerful and can really help, you know, drive that forward. I love it. I and as it. admin organization, you got to be organized. You got <laughs> you to be able to own it um, and be a problem solver. I like problems. Uh, they don't always feel good, but I like being able to be the person that is on the ground really helping find a solution um, to that issue, whether it be for an agent, for a client, um, for my team members, being able to be an independent problem solver and really dig deep um, allows that opportunity for growth as well.
I love it. You're like that weird combination between a people person who loves serving others mm -hmm. and highly organized. Would that, is that a great summary? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And you probably had to learn a lot and grow. Oh gosh. Yeah. Yeah. There's days where I don't feel like I'm a people person and you got to really be able to turn it on. Right. Yeah. Um, you got to have that little self-talk with yourself. Um, and there's days where I don't necessarily feel, feel organized because things are coming at me in all different directions. Um, sure. But I'm sure Chris will come on here. She's saved me in so many ways because when the workload's piling up and I'm feeling buried, I know I can turn to somebody and leverage, um, which I'm mm -hmm. sure we'll get into leverage, you know, in a little bit. But it's it really is so powerful to be able to know that, you know, Carissa and our other assistants have been able to be there through knowing that we're not by ourselves in it. Right. Okay. Well, you've just done a perfect segue. Uh, thank you guys for, you know, the folks that are right now in the audience, we're definitely going to get to questions. I want this to be as interactive as possible. I want you to pick Caitlin's brain and Carissa's because we're going to bring her on in just two seconds. Um, but I, before we do, I just want to make sure um, we kind of explain how you believe the best, the best practices working with a virtual assistant when you're a big huge team with multiple locations like you guys. So let's, let's dive into that question and then we'll bring Chris on. Okay. Well, the biggest part of it is Chris is part of our team. She is a employee, just like the rest of our admins in the sense yep. of, you know, we, we treat her with the same amount of respect. We provide her the same amount of training opportunities. You know, I know mods also provides her with that opportunity. Um, but we also, take it upon ourselves to make sure that if we expect um, our, our VAs to learn something that we need to be able to provide that training and that support to help them get there. And so um, that's a big part of it is just knowing that they're becoming part of your family. Um, and so we absolutely love that about all of our, um, our, our VPs. Um, so that's part of it. Well, you just said something that's really important to our business. It's that we succeed when our clients really have an understanding of training and leading somebody who's in a virtual space, right? So we're, we're definitely going to dive in. I want to bring um, Carissa on right now. Carissa, can you come? She's going to log in and jump on, and we're going to just do a quick interview with her. Um, and here she is. Carissa, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me, Daniel. Oh my goodness, this is so exciting. Okay, so Caitlin, what, um, I, maybe you should, I think you would be great at asking Chris some questions. So let's pretend uh, that you guys are in a space and you're interviewing her. Um, and let's just start off, Chris, what's your story with My Outdesk? How did you get started? Where did you, you know, how did you find My Outdesk? And then uh, we'll go from there. Is that cool? Yes, it is. Um, okay. Actually, I, uh, before my Outdesk, I was working um, a regular uh, uh, job, nine to five job. But um, my daughter, I'm a single mom, so my daughter, she um, needed really, uh, she, she got accelerated. So she needed um, extra help with her uh, study. So I, I really took that time to search. I actually Googled um, work at home jobs. And yeah. um, my outdesk came up, and uh, I researched the company, and um, I really, I really appreciated the the value that the company provided a family table. Um, that really spoke to me because um, my number one motivation for working at home is my family. So um, yeah, I I applied uh, almost seven years ago, and um, uh, her group has been my first client and <laughs> my client ever since. And I'm really happy working with Caitlin every day. <laughs> <laughs> and all our awesome. other um, OTs. That's awesome. Um, for the audience, uh, Chris mentioned Family Table. It's one of our core values as a company. We treat people as if, you know, they're family. And we would sit down to a, a meal with anybody that we work with. Caitlin could come over and we'd, we'd share a meal together, you know. And Carissa, um, I really appreciate you saying that because it's really important that we treat everybody with respect and we show them the way and help them win. That's a big deal. Um, okay, Caitlin, take it away. This is your interview. I love it. Oh, goodness. Well, Chris, I just want to say thank you here. I, I 
do my best to tell you how much I'm thankful for you on a regular basis, but you're an amazing, amazing teammate and you're, you're an amazing mom too. So there's a huge mm -hmm. shout out for that. Carissa is a very, very good mom. Um, Carissa, what would you say is one of your favorite parts of working for her group? Um, I would say the encouragement, or actually you mentioned earlier the culture that we have at her group. Um, I really appreciate Adam saying, or um, coining, I don't, I don't know if he coined that term, failing forward, but um, I, I really embrace that because um, a lot of times you get discouraged when you uh, make mistakes, and we do make mistakes every day, but um, uh, one, I think one of my strengths is positivity. positivity. So um, by applying failing forward, um, I learn from my mistakes and then I apply being positive and um, uh, trying to do something to make my actions moving forward um, correct <laughs> and um, uh, to benefit um, all of the agents that we're working with um, to provide them with the ultimate leverage that I can. That's amazing. Mm. And we all fail forward every day. Gosh, we, you know, we all make mistakes. And, you know, I love that you, you learn from that. And you are, you know, you're so good at taking feedback and just making it that much better in the future. So that's one thing we're also super, um, you know, proud of you of and through your growth path, really, do you want to share um, with everybody listening and watching what your, your growth has been within the company, you know, from starting, I, I mentioned, that you pretty much trained me on part of the listing management piece of that and to where you are today. What, what, does, that, what does that look like for you? Um, well, I, like you said, I started also with listing management, um, but mostly just on the marketing aspect of it. Um, what, let's see, uh, just getting all the listings on the websites and um, it's pretty much the same day in and day out. And then eventually we expanded to pre-listing, so um, all the documents, all, um, uh, what else is there, like scheduling photos, um, couriers, and all that. But um, now um, I've also been trained on transaction coordination, um, let's see, launching new agents. We have so many teams. We have 20 teams that you mentioned earlier, and um, I really love working with all of them. And um, uh, also back end, um, mostly reports, um, website setup. Um, right now, I, I also um, took over hosting calls or meetings. So um, I'm really learning a lot every day, actually, with the power-ups, and it's very encouraging. And um, yeah, it, it, I think the growth potential is really um, through the roof. <laughs> I can't really um, uh, limit myself with just one task. And um, as a VA, like we do things every day, the same things every day, but the growth potential is really there. Yeah, that's and you've you've earned it along the way. You know, you're such a hard worker. Chris is not saying it, but she has been um, now our lead VA for her group. So any of our, our VPs that we bring into the company, they really are working with Carissa one-on-one -on -one to get trained and up to speed. And they meet with her and she trains them and she teaches them the ropes. And as you just heard, she has her hands in almost every aspect of our business and because you know she's been able to learn that she might not do every piece of it on a daily basis but we trust and you know respect carissa so much to really open up that opportunity um what would you say is probably one of the most challenging things um you know in in your in your time with her group um hmm, challenging well maybe Let's see. Challenging in in a good way is um, working with different people, because um, people come with different personalities, different backgrounds. So you get to be exposed to um, uh, different cultures that people are coming from, also. And um, uh, you learn from everyone that you work with, and you grow from um, interacting with them. And uh, uh, yeah, that's it's challenging, but in a good way. You're always so positive too. <laughs> You know, one, it, one question that I had is like, Chris, what is, um, you know, what would you tell agents out there who are considering hiring somebody like yourself 
as an operations leader, because you are a leader within the group, right, Caitlin? I mean, that she's 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 teaching people how to do the job. She she's learning multiple facets of the business. Um, so, what would you tell somebody who's considering hiring a virtual assistant? Like best practices to get them up to speed, and what did you experience? Um, I think uh, the best way that um, worked for me is um, really having the system set up already. But um, if 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 the agent or the team is still starting starting out small, um, it's really um, just working with us on a day to day basis that um, you let us know exactly what you need. And um, uh, I really appreciate the trust that Caitlin and the uh, actually the whole her group has um, given, and um, uh, they really just. Um, outlined everything and then they trusted me that I will follow through and then um, uh, I also encourage VPs to be very um, what do you call this very proactive. Vocal. yes oh, uh, proactive yeah. and um, uh, telling every what uh, the people that we work with what we need exactly what we need and um, what would work because uh, uh, like was mentioned before um, we're the one who's in there in the nitty-gritty uh, nitty every day so um, we know what is working. We know what um, can be um, optimized more or can be mm -hmm. leveraged or, um, yeah, uh, I think that's uh, one of the best ways that um, uh, it's really uh, transparency. Yeah, that's the word I'm looking for, transparency for um, the agent and the VA or the VP. I love it. I love it. Caitlin, what were you going to ask? Oh, goodness. I was, of all of the pieces of the puzzle that you touch every day, what would you consider to be your favorite part of what like division or piece of the jobs your favorite? Um, since I started with listing management, maybe I think that <laughs> I know the ins and outs of uh, listing management. So um, I think I can do that very well. But um, uh, since I also started with transaction coordination, um, I've also been really uh, liking how to um, I mean, liking how, seeing how the work that we do on listing management and then um, it transi transitioning over to transaction and um, pendings and closings and but it's like, wow, we, we did our job, we marketed our listing and now they're closing. And I really like that, um, uh, uh, what do you call it, that transition. You want to see the money is what you're saying, huh? <laughs> show me the money, show me that commission. <laughs> Um, okay. Well, what about, um, so you started with listing management, went to transaction management. Um, what has been, and I love what you said earlier, it's good to have open communication and know what the expectation, uh, expectation is and mm -hmm. some transparency. What has been um, your favorite part about working with Caitlin, the her group? Like what has been the part that has made it wow for you? Um, I think it really is the culture. Um, I like how everyone is so encouraging. And um, uh, Caitlin said I'm really positive, but I think everyone at her group is really positive as well. And um, we all merge our, our um, different personalities well. And um, yeah, uh, they really teach us. They really encourage us on a day-to-day -day basis that um, even if we make mistakes, like um, even Adam, he, he tells us to just fail forward yeah really and um uh really it, it boils down to culture how people treat people with respect and um with dignity and with trust it's really mm. encouraging for us uh vps who work remotely to experience that i love it and guys we're gonna um we've got a couple questions i want to just kind of you know, answer them. Um, some of them will be for Caitlin, some of them for Carissa. But if you have some questions, now is the time. We've been about 20 minutes into this interview, so we like to kind of get interactive. Um, and I'm guessing that our audience is going to have better questions than me, you know. So if you have any questions that are coming up, these guys are doing a thousand transactions, you know, a year with a goal of 2000 this year, which is insanely cool. Um, so definitely um, just go into the system and do a chat and I'll answer those questions one by one. Um, what are some of the pitfalls or mistakes, Caitlin and, and Krista, maybe you can jump in too, of working with a virtual assistant? What have you learned or what are the things that you would want to avoid um, working with a virtual assistant 
so that everybody who's listening can kind of have a jump start, you know, um, on, on making this successful. So I wouldn't avoid ever working with a virtual assistant at all. Um, it has only opened up our world to more opportunity and more leverage and more growth. However, um, Carissa kind of pinned on this a little bit is, you know, if you can have your system a baseline set, um, that's really helpful in getting started because when you yeah. already know what to ex what you expect out of somebody and from there you can kind of hand it over train them and run with it and know that you have at least transferred over the information or the process that you want to work the best yeah. um realistically too you know carissa talks a lot about mistakes and failing forward and you know we none of us are perfect we all make those mistakes however it's not you have to expect that. You have to be open to it, especially when anyone's learning new. I mean, even from our operations coordinators across the country, like there's always got to be a little room for error. Um, there's very few things that can't be fixed in this industry. And I think that if you can come from a place of if a mistake happens and you can teach to how to fix it um, through either, you know, learning, you know, understanding Chris's learning style. Is it a video that I need to record and send to her so she can go back and watch multiple times, but I don't have to sit there and train her on how to do it five times? Is it bullet point instructions? Really understanding their learning style can help when that mistake happens. Here, go back, watch this. I need you to ask me what questions that you have that you might not understand or that aren't clear. And right. then from there, we also don't want those mistakes to happen again. So we do set pretty high standards of that's what the fail forward is. You can fail all day long, but we don't want to constantly be making the mistake, same mistake again. Yeah. Carissa, what's your answer? What, what would you want to, uh, our audience to avoid when hiring a virtual assistant? Um, let's see. When hiring a virtual assistant, um, I would think... Um, Gee, I'm not really sure. <laughs> Coming from a virtual assistant's point of view, um, I would think that um, maybe when they are really expecting us to know everything already, because sometimes, because yeah. sometimes you still need to um, train and um, really study the system. But mm -hmm. um, even if we do have um, background from another team. Um, sometimes the system that they work with is really um, too different and um, mm -hmm. it's just really um, being patient and um, like Caitlin said, um, lear learning styles are very important. So um, uh, just being patient and um, giving that VA either um, bullet point instructions and um, yeah, the, the transparency is there that um, your expectation and um, that the VA will be able to meet that expe expectation. Um, that really helps. I love it. Um, hey, Caitlin, real quick, what are the things that you should have a virtual assistant do for a real estate team? I like, I, I just want to get your guys's, both of your perspective about everything that is absolutely leverageable to a VA. I mean, I really can't think of things that aren't leverageable. Again, it all comes down to the training of it, you know, and what you, what you want that leverage to look like in your world. Like, for our listing management checklist, Carissa probably could do the whole darn thing if we were like, here, go. Um, being in so many different states, it's a little bit trickier for us in terms of can, um, you know, can she log into this MLS or what are the policies around that? But I mean, gosh, I've gone on vacation before and Carissa has covered for me. So, you know, that's how much of our checklist she and our process she can cover and train. Yep. Um, definitely the things, task-based things of if you can say, hey, go do this in like just a second, then they should be doing that for you. Hey, can you upload this document? Hey, can you, you know, um, you know, add this to this program? Can you, you know, we, we try to provide our VPs with a, with a process, like very, like, go do like if you can not we're not telling them to go do something but like very like one step things they they could do that all day long so definitely first thing get rid of is just very task-based items yeah. some people i've talked to 
you know, Carissa talks to our clients. She's super, not on the phone, but through email and she's amazing at it. So I have no problem with her talking to our sellers. Some people don't necessarily want that to be leveraged. And I think that's okay. I think that, you know, definitely paperwork, definitely thing uploads, things that might only take you a couple minutes, but if you're doing it over and over and over again, that can right. be leveraged off and save you so much time. Yep. What would you, um, what would you guys both, what advice or encouragement? And we're going to, we're going to um, wrap up because we're passing 30 minutes and we want to keep respecting everybody's time. But um, what are some of the common things or pieces of advice or encouragements that you would give to somebody considering hiring a virtual assistant for this operations role? Yeah, do it. Um, if, you have, <laughs> if you have, you know, the means to do it, do it. Um, it, again, it's about the growth and where you can take your business, do it. Um, the leverage is invaluable, honestly. Um, and, and, and spend time pouring into that person. Um, you, you can't just, yes, you know, mods is a great company. Yes. They provide support to our VAs, but it doesn't stop there. Our Carissa, um, you know, Mel, they're, they're part of our team because we make them part of our team and we allow them to be part of our team. So really take that seriously. Um, they're, they're only going to be as good as you train them to be um, realistically. And if you are hesitant or not leveraging or not showing that openness, they, I mean, Carissa, Carissa would know that. And, you know, Carissa goes above and beyond for us on a daily basis. And, you know, I, in, in turn, I know it's because she truly, you know, we care about her and in turn, she cares about us. Um, so that would be my advice is just kind of open your, open your hearts to it, you know, and, you know, it might not be perfect. Um, but if you're, you have to take the time to train them is really Really. That's it. That's it. The bottom line. You do. You it. have to spend the time with it um, to, to get it to what you want it, what that relationship is going to be. That's awesome. And what, um, and Chris, I want you to answer this, but I have a follow-up question for Caitlin. What would the organization look like without virtual assistants today? Oh, gosh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't want to think of it. Everybody would be um, too tied up with um, the tasks that are repeatable. Yeah. And um, instead of being able to really focus on their one thing, um, they'd be tied up in scheduling calendars and uh, managing emails. And <laughs> but, uh, we'd provide that service um, happily for you. So <laughs> you can concentrate on that one thing to really, um, uh, you know, earn the dollars for the agents, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Caitlin, what's your answer? I'm curious. <laughs> there would be a lot of tears um, and there'd be a lot of fires, honestly, that would just be constantly blowing up. I'm telling you, you know, Carissa saves my butt on a daily basis. She supports, I think, five other teams directly um, through the, the model that we've created with our, our, v, our VPs. Um, and she does so much more outside of that too. So it would, you know, I, yes. There, there's days she takes off and she's, we love her to take time off, but even that is hard where I'm like, oh, I miss Carissa. I hope she's coming back tomorrow. Um, so yeah, she's very, very valued. That's how you know when somebody's indispensable. That's how you know. Krista, you, thank you so much for joining. Um, you are a sweetheart for sharing and just being so positive here. And just, I, I love the fact that this is a good seven year relationship. It's just, it's so positive for us. Um, what advice would you give everybody who's listening as we wrap up, as we close up? Um, what's the next step? for folks when it comes to working with virtual assistants. Um, before, before you answer that, um, we do want to give away a copy of our book. We have a book called Scaling Your Business with Virtual Professionals. Um, we've got this in the notes here, in the show notes, so you can just text um, the letters SVP to 31996 and you can get a copy of that. And we'll give you a complimentary kind of consultation where we'll go through your business understand your org chart goals and where you're going and see if we can be a support to you. So if you're listening right now, definitely grab a copy of it. It's actually a, a, a bestseller international. I don't know how that happened. Like, yeah, I'm, awesome. I'm excited too. <laughs> um, but let's, let's wrap up by, you know, 
next steps? Like, what do you think people need to know um, about working with my outdesk or virtual assistants um, that they may not have considered? You guys are going to walk them through every step of the way and every the process. You know, I've gone through the interview process um, multiple times now with mods and it's been so easy and it's been so simple. I've gotten, you know, very speedy response and great resumes. Um, one thing I love is I've been able to say like, hey, here's here's the skill set we're looking for. And those resumes have really matched to who to the person that we need, because you know, everyone might be at a different level of the type of leverage they need in their world. And, and that's okay. It doesn't have to be listing management. It doesn't have to be transaction coordination. You have a lot of great um, people in your organization that are, um, you know, well-rounded and as amazing as Carissa is today. And like I said, for me, I, it's, it takes time to get there too. So, you know, it take you, you have to, as I've said, you have to put the energy into building the relationship, but you know, day one is going to be a lot different than four years together. So. I love it. Chris, so what's your, what's your answer? What, what should people know about like taking the next step? Um, well, I think um, I'd like to promote my out desk because <laughs> they really um, uh, remembering my training ta uh, training days. They really um, expose us to the dif uh, the basics of it all. So um, MLS and uh, marketing and um, video creation. So um, agents don't really need to worry about um, us starting from scratch. Yep. And um, uh, MOD provides great support for that. Um, if ever we need to um, specialize on other tasks, uh, MOD also provides uh, training for that. And um, uh, like Caitlin said, um, the agent also can work closely with the virtual professional to um, really hone us to how you want us to um, work together. Yeah, I love it. What you're talking about is we have an online uh, training platform where we help people get a basic understanding of what it means to be a virtual assistant in a real estate world, you know, and um, we're, we're excited because we've started to add mortgage vertical insurance, like uh, contractors, healthcare. And so we're moving into these other verticals. So if you're listening right now and you're not a real estate professional, um, let us know, give us a call. We're still in that space where, you, you know, you can get a Carissa. Like this is what's crazy is she is tied into your brand. She's tied into, you know, really providing value every single day. And, you know, it's really a third of the cost of a U.S. based person. Chris, or Caitlin, what, what do you think you guys are saving working with my outdesk in total? Oh, goodness. Um, definitely, definitely a good savings there. But again, too, it, it's we've loved my outdesk based off the the value of the candidates too yeah. and the skill set but it is it is significant cost savings it's definitely a great opportunity if you're not ready to hire that full admin what yep. an opportunity to have a virtual professional um to help you start your business and just see how much that leverage can can open doors for you all right, guys you guys have both been awesome Krista, thank you caitlin you're amazing for sharing the story um, and if you're listening, guys, just jump on our website or grab a copy of the book. It's 100% free, our time, our consultation. We don't charge for it, although I've been called crazy for not charging for it, but that's okay. Um, we like to lead with value. And uh, I just want to thank you both for being here today. Thank you so much. Thank yep. you. All right, bye, guys. Bye. Bye.